you're thinking of moving to Charlotte, North Carolina, and you're like, oh God, how, how do I do this and not mess it up? How do I not get taken advantage of? What are the pitfalls and things I need to make sure I don't do so I don't waste any money? Because it's expensive to move. Hey, stay tuned. I'm going to tell you everything I did and regret about my move because nothing and nobody is perfect. So, number one, we were not fully prepared. And as I say all the time, moving is hard. Moving causes heartburn. While you're in this stage of gathering all the information you can, go ahead and start getting your home ready. Finish up those small little things you wanted to do. You wanted to paint some trim, maybe replace a faucet. This fix little things around the house that make it pop and give it that spark. One thing, before you go do any major projects, please, please, I beg you, talk to a real estate professional to see if those big projects even matter. I don't want you to spend more money and more time doing things that didn't get you your money back. So remember that. Now you're thinking, what did I do? How wasn't I fully prepared? What I'd like people to do is to go ahead and have your home inspect, have a pre-inspection done. So you know where the big problems are. As I'd like to say, you wanna find landmines early, not while you're in contract, because you've been in contact with me. We found that perfect home here in the Charlotte area, and you're ready to move. But now you can't because your buyer did a home inspection and found something big with your property, and now you're stuck. This happened to me. Stay tuned to find out what else went wrong in my move. Regret and thing you don't want to do. Number two, move on emotion. So we book our flights. We come tour. We're going to come see the Charlotte area. And we had fell in love with the Lake Wiley area online, you know, just scrolling at it, thinking everything looked beautiful here. Let's go see it. So we fly out. And the day we got here, the next morning, we woke up, had an incredible day, and then we're sitting out on this point. And you can see out on the water, you can see all the boats coming and going, and this storm rolled in. And I really love to watch a storm. Me and my wife, we, we sat there in the gazebo, had a beer, we're watching this storm roll in, and you can feel the energy, and you just start to think, wow, this, this could be my life. I could sit here, sit out on the water, have a beer, feel the energy like it gave me goosebumps and hair on my arms stood up. And so, of course, did I mention it was a 2020 COVID shutdown? Oh, I missed that part. We're living in San Diego. It's 2020, it's in July, COVID, and San Diego is to shut down. So we got here and it was just light and freedom. So we went to see the area and of course we found a house and then we fell in love with the house. So now you can see where this emotion, I say, don't make decisions with your heart, make them with your mind and with your wallet and try to align the three. That is something I work very, very hard to do for you is to help you pump your brakes a little bit and let's make sound financial decisions, not emotional decisions that put your wallet at risk because we have time. We have time to get this correct. So we don't want to move on emotion. Proper planning. In the military, we have a saying, the seven Ps. Proper planning prevents piss poor performance. I didn't properly plan. Stay tuned to find out the rest of this story. Proper plan. So I told you we came out on emotion. We found a home we absolutely love. 
flew back to California and started to get our home kind of prepped. And well, we hadn't had that pre-inspection, but walking around the home, my foundation was cracked. Not just a little crack, not just a simple pour and fill some putty, 35 feet worth of crack in my foundation. We had flown to Charlotte, found our dream area, dream school system, dream home in a dream neighborhood. Man, this, this, this thing is pumping. And so I remember me and my wife, we looked at each other, we're sitting around the kitchen table and we're talking and it's like, hey, can, can we do this? said yes. Yeah. So we looked on our savings, kind of scroll and say, okay, I think we can make this work. And so we got our quotes. We worked with the engineer. We worked with the contractors. We worked with the insurance and we got our initial bids and everything looked pretty good. And so we continued to pack our house, put everything on the U-Haul and Across the country, we came in an RV. We didn't use a U-Haul, we did use a moving company. And packed up everything nice and tidy, got the house clean, squared away so they could begin work. And off we came to the East Coast. And I kind of feel like Billy Blanks here, but wait, there's more. Stay tuned to continue to learn what not to do when you move. My fourth regret, God, I don't know y'all are thinking this guy. Fully understanding moving companies, contracts, policies, and procedures. You talk about some heartburn and heartache <laughs> and maybe some tears. This is another thing I didn't fully understand. Stay tuned to find out the whole story. So fully understanding a moving company's contract is paramount because when they come to pack up your stuff and they're usually going to charge you by weight two to five dollars a pound depending on what it is is how they're going to charge you so make sure you make them come to your house i don't care what a pia it is to get it scheduled have them come to your house Look all around at your couches and your furniture and your guitar and the 10,000 bicycles and all the stuff in your garage that you're gonna move or you think you're gonna move. Because once they have your stuff and it's packed and it's gone, you're on the hook for it. And if they quoted you at 10,000 pounds and now you've got 18,000 pounds, guess what? You're on the hook paying for that. So make sure you understand that. Make sure you understand the contracts and how they're gonna charge you if you're over. This is two parts. The next part, understand how long they legally have to get you your stuff because your cool little boxes and your trinkets, they don't just leave your house and immediately start driving to your next home of where you're going. Your stuff's gonna go to a warehouse. It's probably gonna sit there for a few days until that moving company has enough things to move towards your area. Then they load up the truck and get the most bang for their buck driving an 18 wheeler across the country. Talk to the guys when they came to the house, talk to the guys on the phone some more because I'm moving across country and have a lot of stuff to line up, just like you will. And they said, hey, we should be there in about 10 days. I said, cool. Hang out in San Diego a few days, play on the beach. It's absolutely beautiful. And then you know what? Pack the kids and the dogs in an RV. And we got an RV because I thought, man, putting a kid in the char car seat, 12 hours a day, and the dogs and everything else we needed to come across the country just wasn't feasible. So figure out how you want to do that. So we pack up and we move. And I made good time. I'm driving, get across the country. We get here but our stuff isn't coming. And I call him. Hey, when's your stuff coming? He says, I don't know. You don't know? You don't know when my stuff is coming? I'm here. I've got what I came across in the RV with. A blow-up mattress, some camping chairs, and a couch we had ordered to the house. And the rest of my house is in a warehouse in LA. So fully understand what the moving company's policies, procedures, and contractual obligations are to get you your stuff so you're not stuck like me in a beautiful house 
with nothing you need. The other thing you're gonna have to do is figure out how do you wanna transport your cars? Make sure you line that up also. Are you and the wife just gonna drive down in your vehicles and then send everything else with the moving company? How are you moving your animals? Possibly how are you moving your firearms? All of those little things. Call me, let's go through that list and I can tell you how not to end up like me. Mistake and regret number five. Loose ends, having things not all tied up. Loose end, I packed my house. I've gone, I'm out of my current out of house A in San Diego and I have moved in to house B. Well, kinda, I'm still waiting on all my stuff. And well, you know, I talked to the contractors, I talked to the engineer, I had talked to the insurance company, and at the end of the day, what had to be done was far <laughs> over what was originally quoted, what was originally within the budget, what we originally thought was gonna happen. Remember that 35 foot crack I talked about? 35 feet long, my three feet wide, they had to cut out, re-pour all the footers, redo the kitchen, redo the floor, put the house on stilts. It took almost eight months. So for eight months after we had looked at our savings account and asked ourselves, hey babe, can we do this? Is this what it's worth to get home to our family? Because that's what we were doing, was moving home to, my, to our families here in the Charlotte area. And we made that emotional decision left California with loose ends, not proper planning, not fully knowing what was gonna happen with our home. And meanwhile, we're bleeding money like a stuck pig paying two mortgages and contractors and had to fly back and forth a couple times. Finally, July 4th of 2021, we accepted an offer. It was a great day. It had been out on the water because I do love the lake and love being here now accepted an offer and I think I cried when it closed because of the stress. Moving is stress. Don't leave where you are with loose in. I know not everything's perfect and sometimes you're just gonna have to leave and maybe make a trip or two back. But if you cannot do what I did, your marriage will be better for it. Your relationships with your children will be better for it. Your wallet will thank you. Let's get you planned out. Let's plan you A to Z. And yes, life happens. Things are going to happen. Nothing's going to go perfect. But at least then we have a plan to deviate from and kind of flying around with your head on fire, not 100% sure how in the world you're going to get to Charlotte for this brand new job in the greatest school system you thought you could find for this new life you're going to have. Please call me. Call me earlier so you don't go through all the tums and end up with stomach ulcer. Moving can be fun, it can be exciting, but let's get you properly planned so you don't end up with the seven Ps. Proper planning prevents piss poor performance. So what did y'all think? That's my story. And I know you're like, man, this dude's a realtor, been in the military, moved across the country many times. How did he make all those mistakes? Most of it was emotion, and piss poor planning. I'm Joe McIntosh. This was another episode of Carolina Salute. If I could ever help you with anything, please call, text, email, clap some pigeons, send me a Zoom request, and let's get you the information you need for a smooth move across the country.